Hi there, this is Math 2, Unit 8, Worksheet Number 4. Today we're looking at properties of trapezoids and we're doing a little homework review on the properties of trapezoids here. So let's take a look at what we have. We're going to be first of all solving for the variables in each side of each diagram. First of all, recognize that with a trapezoid, a trapezoid is a quadrilateral, right? Which means that the sum of the interior angles is going to be equal to 360 degrees, okay? For the interior angles there. Knowing that's the case, a couple properties that we can look at is that we also know that our consecutive interior angles are going to be equal to 180 degrees. So that would mean that in this case here, 136 plus 2x will be equal to 180. So to solve for x, I can subtract 136. I can subtract 136 and we can go this becomes 7 and 10 minus 6 is 4 7 minus 3 is 4 and so 2x equals 44 I divide both sides by 2 and x equals 22 so that's my value of x right there which means that yeah that's x there so to solve for y I do the same thing 2y plus 100 plus 4y minus 82 is going to equal 180. So these two combined are going to equal 180 degrees. So I combine my, my like terms, 4y and 2y becomes 6y. 100 minus 82 is going to be equal to 18. And again, that's equal to 180. I subtract 18 from both sides. And 6y is going to equal 162. When I divide both sides by 6, I end up with y equals 27. Okay, so that's how you're gonna go about solving that. The same thing here on that one. Again, consecutive interior angles are gonna be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, moving down to the next section. On this next section, we have a series of questions, all very similar. I'm gonna look at numbers three and four and seven. And what happens when we have a line segment in the middle is that the sum of the top one, let's call this A, right? We'll call this line A. This one plus this one, so A plus B is going to be equal to two times the middle one, all right? The one in the middle. That's the idea. This top line added to the bottom line is going to be equal to the one in the middle, and that's because this is bisecting this line here, so we have equal parts. When those equal parts are there, then we know that um, we have this, this little way of working it out. So in this case here, we would say that 10 plus the B is 3X minus 4 is equal to 2 times the C value, which in this case was 2X. All right, so 10 minus 4 is 6. So I have 6 plus 3X equals, and distribute here, 2 times 2x is 4x, so I subtract 3x, subtract 3x, and x is going to be equal to 6. That's my x value. Again, so it's that plus that equals 2 times the middle. So to find out what gh is going to be, I use the value of x. I see gh is 2x. I plug 6 in for x, and 2 times 6 is 12. Okay, let's try another one. Again, I take my top, 10, add it to the bottom, 6x minus 2, and I set that equal to 2 times the middle term, 4x plus 1. I'm going to have to then combine over here, so I have 6x plus 8, and distribute here. 2 times 4 is 8x, and 2 times 1 is 2. And so now I can subtract 6x, subtract 6x, so I have a 2x over here. I can subtract 2, subtract 2, so now I have a 6 over here. Divide both sides by 2, and I get 3 is equal to x, so x equals 3. To find out what Fe is going to be, I'm going to plug 3 into that spot right there. So I do 6 times 3 minus 2. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 minus 2 is going to be 16. All right, let's take a look now at number 7. Even though it's, I did seven just because it's the same thing, but it's just twisted sideways, right? So what would we say? We're gonna say that x plus three plus the bottom, four x plus one is equal to two times the middle term, 
22. So combining 4x and x becomes 5x, 3 and 1 becomes 4, and 2 times 22 is 44. So we subtract 4, subtract 4, so 5x equals 40, divide both sides by 5, and x equals 8. Again, plugging that into the wz, we would say that 8 plus 3 is equal to 11, and that's my solution for that one right there. Okay, let's turn the page and look at the back side. Okay, so we're going to look now at numbers 8, 9, 12, 8, 9, 12, 13, and 16 is the goal. So here we go, let's take a look at number 8. What is true about an isosceles trapezoid that is not necessarily true about all trapezoids? So we're looking at an isosceles. That means it's going to be with those sides. It means these sides are going to be equal there, like so. So what's true about them? This means that there are two sides are congruent, right? That side and that side are congruent. That's one thing that's going to be true. We'd also say that the base angles are congruent so that angle matches that angle there and we can also say that diagonals diagon <laughs> see if I can spell today good thing it's a math class not a spelling class diagonals <laughs> are congruent meaning that line would equal that line I mean, you know these three properties, these three facts about isosceles trapezoids to answer the next questions. So here we go. Number nine. Okay, so this is the base angle there and there. So 58 is going to equal that one there. So if 58 is there, we'd say this is 58 degrees there. Got it. Now, if that's the case, then we also know that the, uh, the consecutive interior angles add up to 180 still. So we could do 180 minus 58 to get this one, and we end up with 122. So if this is 122, then this one is also 122. So they're both 122 degrees right there. Looking at number 12. Again, we said the base angles are going to be congruent. So we can say that 48 is equal to 5n plus 3. So we subtract 3 and we have 45 equals 5n. We divide by 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9. And so 9 equals n right there. For this next one, number 13. All right, we're looking for the lengths of the sides. Okay, so these two are going to be equal to each other. 3x minus 3 equals x plus 5. We're going to subtract x to have 2x over here. We can add 3, add 3, so it equals 8. Divide both sides by 2, so that x equals 4. In this case right there, no problem. Looking at the next one, uh, so you find the value, yeah, value of the variables, got it. So to 16. For 16, same idea, we have that AC, the diagonal, is x plus 5, and BD, the diagonal, is 2x minus 2. The diagonals are going to be equal to each other, so AC is going to be congruent to BD. So let's set that up. We would say x plus 5 is equal to 2x minus 2. So I'm going to subtract x, subtract x, so I have x over here. I'm going to add 2, add 2, so that goes away there. And 5 plus 2 is 7, so x equals 7 right there. Okay? Now let's take a look at the next side here, which we'll just take a look at these true-false statements and see how you do there. All right, so here's what we have. Okay, so true, false. If it's false, draw a counterexample. So let's take a look at these ones here. Diagonals of a rhombus must be congruent. Let's take a look here. If this is a rhombus, a rhombus means it has equal sides. All right, just drawing one out here. Will the diagonals be congruent? Well, take a look at this. That's a diagonal, and that's pretty lengthy compared to that length right there. And so that seems to be a longer length, so we would say this would be a false statement because you're gonna have one short and one long side or diagonal when you make the diagonal rhombus there. Number 20, all angles of a rectangle are congruent. Well, to be a rectangle as defined, then you're gonna have 90 degree angles in each of the corners there. 
So because it's going to be 90 degrees all the way around, that would be a true statement. All sides of a rectangle are congruent. Well, if it's a rectangle, we know that we have 90 degree sides there, and we have the opposite sides are at least congruent, but that doesn't mean that all the sides are congruent. If they were, we would call that a square. So we would say that would be false. The diagonals of a square form four right triangles. So when you do the diagonals of a rhombus, and a square is a particular kind of rhombus here, the diagonals do create perpendicular angles, um, perpendicular lines, which means I have a 90 degree angle there. So as a result, I have a 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree, 90 degree. I end up having four right triangles in that space. So that would be a true statement. A trapezoid cannot have a right angle. Well, the idea of the trapezoid is it has four sides, right? And it has one set of parallel lines. So I could have a line like that and that, and we've done this before, like trapezoid, but if I stop right here and connect it there, I still actually have a trapezoid. I have a set of parallel lines here, here, there's my pair of parallel lines but I can create it so that I actually have 90 degree angles right there. So it can have right angles, that is a possibility. So we'd say it's a false statement. And the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect the angles, okay? Well, parallelogram means I have two sets of parallel lines, right? Here's a rectangle, for example. Let's make a long skinny rectangle here, right? A parallelogram is a type of rectangle. I have parallel lines here and here and I have here and here. I can do this also with a kind of curvy shape like so. It doesn't make a difference. So here and here, and then here, 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 here. And when I draw these lines across my diagonals, I don't end up with 90 degrees. That's an obtuse angle right there. And even here, when I look at that one going across, I end up with an obtuse and an isosceles, or uh, uh, scaling, sorry, acute angle there question though is does it bisect the angle meaning are these part equal to each other and you can kind of tell by just looking at it, that seems to be a smaller angle than that one and same as over there so we end up with different angle sizes this is one and this becomes a different one over here okay so that would be a false statement that's it for today have a great day